But, but aren't you too shy to keep an honest diary? I may be too dishonest to keep an honest diary, but I'm not too shy. <laughs> Are you dishonest? One, one is struggling with that all the time, you know, especially in this kind of work, because there's a... Um, I mean, every writer learns certain tricks, so that's okay, you know. There's certain techniques and tricks that you have, but... And maybe you can fool others, but there's a certain... There's a certain... You can't fool yourself in these matters. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to fool yourself, so that you, you keep digging for the authentic tone. But liar, of course, uh, you can't. It, it, it's unfair to present yourself uh, socially uh, with um, brutal honesty. You know, it's like if someone asks you, "How are you?" You know, and you tell them, but you know, they don't want to. You know, it's unfair to tell people how you are. Smile when I'm angry. I cheat and I lie. Except for a couple of hours in the morning, which I passed in the company of a sage. I stayed in bed without food, only a few mouthfuls of water. You are a fine-looking old man, I said to myself in the mirror. And what is more, you have the correct attitude. You don't care if it ends or if it goes on. And as for women and music, there will be plenty of that in paradise. Then I went to the mosque of memory to express my gratitude. I haven't read that since I wrote it. <laughs> is that true or is it? It's just a joke, you know. <laughs> it's all just a joke. But do you have the correct attitude? Do you care if it ends or if it goes on? Not really. So when you were little, were you more known as a, as a funny little bloke? Or were you this uh, serious little chap? I don't know. You know, when in the epoch, the era, uh, the time that I grew up, you know, um, psychological profiles were not fashionable. Uh, you know, you just followed orders, more or less, and whatever you could do on the sly, you did, but, um, you know, it was, it was a pretty disciplined kind of existence when I was a kid. Uh, there wasn't the kind of uh, uh, youth rebellion that we see today. And uh, authority and parental control were very very strong and nobody cared what your inner condition was you know as long as your shoes were beneath your uh, underneath your bed you know in the right way <laughs> yeah no no we didn't and we weren't close to our parents we didn't really discuss our inner condition with our parents it was very 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 uh, wise kind of upbringing it didn't, um, it didn't invite self-indulgence. But you learned discipline. Oh, I, it was, you learned good manners, you know, which is better than discipline. 
and your dog? My dog? Oh, uh, you know, I'm very happy these days because my daughter, who lives uh, in the same house as I do, she has two dogs. And I, I love dogs, and, uh, and, and she's brought two dogs into my life. It's, it's really wonderful. And I play with them every day and teach them tricks. What kind of dogs? Mutts, just, uh, just street dogs. But she got them from the pound, you know. Did you have a dog when you were little? Yes, I had a, a, a Scotty, Scottish Terrier. Uh, his name was, my mother named him Tovaric, comrade. We called him Tinky. And uh, yes, a very, uh, very, I guess, the closest being to me during my childhood. The dog would sleep under my bed and follow me to school and, and wait for me. Uh, uh, so that was a, a great sense of companionship. Because you sometimes write about a dog. Well, I have his picture on my, on my dresser in Los Angeles. We, we loved uh, that dog, you know. My sister gave me his picture framed as a present. And what happened when he died? He died when he was about 13 years old, which is quite old for a dog. And uh, he just... Uh, asked to go out one night. You know how a dog will just go and stand beside the door. So we opened the door. It was a winter night. And he walked out, and we never saw him again. And it was very uh, distressing. You know, I put ads in the newspaper, and we would, people would say, yes, we have found a Scotty. And, you know, you'd drive 50 miles, and it wouldn't be your Scotty. Uh, and we only found him in the springtime when the snow melted and the smell came from under the neighbor's porch. Uh, he had just gone outside and gone under the neighbor's porch to die. There's some kind of uh, charity to his owners. Uh, you know. I asked a, a couple of my female fr friends uh, uh, to help me with questions to you. And they all had the same question. What is the question? Ask him if he wants to make love to me. <laughs> uh, I'm not so active in this front anymore. But I, I suppose I could make an exception. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell them that. I, I was a bit surprised, actually, because, I mean, now for the last, uh, since 93, you've been so much into the spiritual world. When I talked to you last, we talked a lot about uh, very serious spiritual matters. But it seems that you still come across as the ladies' man. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's a curious reputation. Uh, very in in inaccurate. Uh, I have, uh, there are a lot of women in my life, certainly. Uh, uh, somehow I appreciate the competence of women. I like the way women work. So I find myself working with uh, a, a woman engineer and a woman co-writer. My manager is a woman. Um, In what way do they differ from men, their way of working? Uh, um, more selfless. Um, not so much... Uh, less ego. Less ego, not so much on the line. Or, or a more skillful um, negotiation with the ego. And also very quick, very, very quick, which I, which I appreciate. But you tried to uh, kill the ladies' man in, in the 70s already, death of a ladies' man. Well, women took care of that. <laughs> How do you mean? I didn't try to kill any, anyone. I felt I got, I felt I got creamed in a certain way, uh, but everybody has that feeling of the disaster uh, of the heart because nobody masters the heart and nobody's a real ladies man or a, or, or, or a love gangster. I mean, nobody, nobody really gets a handle on that. Your heart just cooks like shish kebab and your breast, you know, sizzling and crackling and, uh, uh, and too hot. 
too hot for the body. Uh, so uh, those descriptions, uh, of course, are, are, are easy and uh, a kind of joke, a kind of uh, simple description, but uh, I haven't really met, uh, and I've known, I've known some men who have real reputations as ladies' men who are, are real lady killers. And, uh, and they don't have any handle on it either. I don't think anybody feels very confident in that realm, uh, at whatever level you're, you're operating. So how did you feel? Well, the reputation was completely undeserved, for one thing. I don't think my, my concerns uh, about women and about sex were any deeper or uh, uh, more elaborate than any other guy that I met, you know, that seemed to be the content of most people's, like, you know, women are the content of men and men are the content of women. So everybody's involved in this uh, enterprise uh, with everything they've got. And most hanging on by the skin of their teeth. And uh, as I say, nobody masters the situation, especially if it really touches the heart then one is in a condition of anxiety most of the time. And even the great ladies' men that I've bumped into, and I've, and I've met some real ones, uh, and I'm not in their league, uh, you know, the sense of anxiety about the conquest is still very much there. Because in any case, the woman chooses. How? I think the woman, the woman chooses. Uh, I've, it's been told to me that the woman chooses and, and she decides within seconds of meeting the man whether or not she's going to give herself to him. In any case, I think, in most cases, the woman is running the show in these matters. And I'm happy to let them have it. Oh, we're drinking and we're dancing and the band is really happening and the Johnny Walker wisdom running high. And my very sweet companion, she's an angel of compassion. She's rubbing up the world against her thigh. And every drinker, every dancer lifts a happy face to thank her. The fiddler fiddles something so sublime. You know, the, uh, nothing's over till it's over, but, you know, I find myself in a graceful moment, uh, more or less relaxed. So, so you, can, you can really experience a big difference in, in how you tackle things now compared to earlier? Well, I, you know, I read somewhere that uh, as you get older, the brain cells associated with anxiety begin to die. Oh, uh, so that's uh, why I feel so much better. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I think, uh, you know, if that's true, in any case, in my case, it seems to be true. Uh, you know, you can just take it all a little more lightly. It's also very common that when you grow a little older, you start thinking more about your childhood, and, and a lot of people want to get back to their roots. And, and uh, you, you were born a Jew. Did you at all experience this? I, I don't have those feelings. I, 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 I think you get very interested in your children as you get older, and, um, and very, um, very touched by their lives. So the depressions that you suffered from very much in your earlier days? Uh... They've lifted. They've lifted completely. So aging is quite nice. In, in my case, it's been uh, a great blessing. But there must be some hard part of it. Well, I think the collapse of the body uh, um, is, uh, is an aspect to it, and, and I, I'm not in old age, you know. Uh, I 
I think I'm in that good period, you know, before the onset of the diseases that eventually kill you. Uh, I think it was Tennessee Williams said, uh, life is a fairly well-written play, except for the third act. It's a very bad third act. But for you, it was the best so far. Well, uh, uh, you know, just beginning the third act is, is fine. I don't know how the third act will unfold, but it doesn't unfold very well for anybody. No. So I'm probably in, in, you know, the most graceful period that I've ever experienced, you know, before the onset of these uh, unpleasant, the unpleasant destruction of the body, which is inevitable. Do you think there is a big difference between uh, aging for a, a man and for a woman? Women say it is. Uh, most of the women I talk to about it say, uh, you know, you're lucky, you, you know, we're finished at whatever it is. <laughs> But I, I, I know uh, a, a lot of women my age and uh, who are also uh, dealing with it very gracefully and very gratefully. You know, a lot of people, men and women, are just relieved that a certain aspect to the struggle is over. And which aspect is this? Um,